Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, I guess you've seen the thumbnail, so it won't come as any surprise that I'm going to produce a rather large item. Yes, I've been on eBay and I've got this, which is a Science Fair 75 in 1 uh, electronic project kit. Now, I produced a video a few months ago where I looked at the Philips Electronic Engineer, which is actually something I had as a child. Uh, I never had one of these, but I did see them uh, in my uh, local Tandy, uh, and there were various versions of it. So when this came up on eBay for £11, quite frankly, uh, I, I just couldn't resist it. So um, uh, that's what I've done now. The actual box the cardboard top box is a little bit tatty but to be fair you know it's probably i don't know i reckon it's about 48 years old something like that so it's not doing too bad for a for a cardboard box but what's remarkable about this is that the other half of the box isn't cardboard it's actually wood and it's got some beautiful uh, comb joints at the corners here's a close-up um quite remarkable really i'm sure they wouldn't make things like that anymore so there we go. Right, let's um, let's have a look at what it is and see um, how well the components have survived, and then let's um, see if we can make a couple of things with it. Okay, here's the uh, internals of the box then, and um, apologies if it's a bit of a, a squished view. It's actually quite difficult to get this in. It uh, completely fills my bench. Now the resistors, uh, when I check them are still well within their, uh, uh, well they're all got a gold band as the fourth band so they're 5% and they're all still well within 5% and I would expect that because these resistors have almost certainly spent most of their life not connected to anything, they've not had a hard life like they might do in the anode circuit of a, a tube receiver or a valve receiver. Uh, so I've got an LCR meter here, check the um, capacitors. Um, so we've got uh, 0.1 microfarad here, let's pop it on there and would expect that to be 100 N, it's actually uh, 87, so that's not bad for a ceramic. Uh, let's have a look at uh, 0.002 here. Sorry, I'm talking rubbish there, 100 picofarads coming up at uh, 114 so yeah that's okay we've got 10 um, picofarad here and that's going up a little high at um, at about at about 21 may have been like that in the first place but there's, these capacitors don't usually move uh, let's have a look at 0.01 there Sorry, 0.002. That should be 2N, and it is indeed 2N. I'm getting confused by the markings on here. And we're getting 9.8N uh, in there for a, what would be a 10N capacitor. Finally, we've got um, 0.05 microfarads. That should be 50 nanofarads. It's, it's just slightly under 45. So they're not too bad. Now I wouldn't expect the same kind of thing from the electrolytics, better get the polarity right for these. Um, so here we've got 3.3 um, microfarad and it's uh, 2. I think the ESR is uh, pretty high so that's probably well past its best. This is 10 microfarads, actually coming up at 9, slightly lower. Uh, ESR, but probably still not ideal. This is 100 microfarads. That's coming up at 107, but it's got a much more sensible uh, ESR there at 1.5 ohms, so that probably 100 microfarads probably all right. Um, now this should be 470. It's coming up at 356 and quite a high ESR. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to just, um, these are all 10 volt components, so I'm going to just leave them on a about an 8 volt supply just to see if uh, it's possible to reform the dielectric at all and then I'll, uh, I'll give them another measurement. So I'll come back when I've, uh, when I've done that. 
Well, here we are back again. Um, I've had the uh, about nine and a half volts across this capacitor for about um, four or five minutes, and as you can see, this is a 470 microfarad. It's still reading a similar capacitance, but the ESR is considerably lower. The um, 100 microfarad was all right, and these two, the 3.3 and the uh, 10, um, hasn't really. If I can, yeah. There we go, it hasn't really made a, a great deal of difference to be quite honest. The ESR are still similar on those two, so they're probably um, past their best. Try and get a better connection on there for you. Yeah, and you can see the ESR is particularly high on the 3.3 microfarad. So, um, electrolytic capacitors, yep, they need some work. Um, be a shame to spoil the look of the kit, it would be very easy for me to install uh, replacement capacitors underneath and actually leave the older ones uh, on view. Um, so I might do that actually to try and preserve the uh, originality so to speak. Um, the variable capacitor works fine. Um, all the rest of the components here work fine. You'll see in some later circuits the uh, various bits and pieces working well. The only problem I've come across is that one of the connections on the uh, antenna coil uh, appears to be open circuit and I've tried to uh, fix it but uh, not got very far I'm afraid so I will have another look at that but uh, that's potentially the only casualty but for £11 I uh, really can't grumble right let's now have a look at um, a couple of, uh, of the more straightforward projects see if we can uh, put this device to the test okay I'm back again uh, I was going to put the device to the test, but I neglected to mention the semiconductors. All the diodes check out. Uh, there was an intermittent connection on the LED, so I've simply replaced that. Even the, the lamp uh, still works okay, it's, uh, which is good really, because that's a 25 volt bulb and I don't have any of that voltage. Um, the uh, other semiconductors, the uh, cadmium sulfide uh, resistor, photoresistor works fine. Solar cell is... Um, indeed producing some voltage. We'll try and do a project that makes use of one of those so you can see it. Uh, the SCR here uh, is definitely working. I've checked it. Um, if I put that onto my component tester it uh, doesn't make any sense of it. I think uh, SCRs uh, uh, are ancient history as far as me uh, TC1 is concerned. But the three transistor we've got the 2SC, the 2SB and the 2SA. Now that's perhaps uh, a bit of a Oops, apologies, that's me shorting out the, um, uh, the bench power supply. The, the three resistors, um, we've got uh, two germanium, uh, that's, that's these two, and the one silicon. So I'm just going to um, show you the results from the transistor tester for those. First of all, the 2SC, that's here. So that's OK. Now the 2SB is there and finally the 2SA here so you can hopefully see there that yep yeah, indeed um, all three of those transistors are working well which is good because I was uh, struggling a bit with the Philips electronic engineer transistors so it's good that uh, these things work on here right let's now definitely go and look at some projects okay here's the first of uh, a couple of projects this one uh, is product uh, number 10. Here's a, a scan of the manual, page 17, and this is a cadmium sulfide um, photometer. Uh, and I think this circuit again, nice and simple, but uh, we've simply got uh, the um, cadmium sulfide cell uh, down here being uh, uh, used, and, and this output of that being tra amplified uh, and driving the meter uh, with a bit of a adjustment here on the, uh, uh, the control or as I called it potentiometer so currently um, it's quite a bit of light falling on the cell so if I adjust the, if I can do this without getting in the way if I adjust that there you can hopefully see that the meter is moving so we've got full scale there pretty much um, and if I put my fingers over the cell get a little bit of movement there and if I put my finger right over it and completely darken it yeah, we can reduce uh, current flow quite considerably. So, 
Yeah, that's a real life example, not only that the cadmium sulphide cell works, but also that the um, meter mechanism is still okay after the best part of 50 years. So that's a nice simple circuit, um, let's have a look at another one. Okay, so here's a, a test circuit and uh, I've chosen something fairly straightforward and noisy as a bit of a, a start out. So this is project number 9 on page 16, here's a scan of page 16 of the uh, of the manual and you can see it's um, an oscillator using uh, the 2SB uh, transistor so a uh, germanium oscillator um, and fairly straightforward it makes use of a couple of capacitors and it actually uses the inductance of the uh, transformer as uh, as part of the frequency control so very very uh, simple circuit um, so here it is built on the uh, on the project kit board. The only thing that's different um, to uh, how it would have been used originally is I'm not using batteries. I've got uh, uh, 9 volts uh, being fed in here um, from my bench power supply. Uh, that is quite literally the only difference uh, and I've got a couple of probes here on the uh, oscilloscope. So uh, this is going to be noisy. Apologies in advance. Let's um, I put the power supply on so I'll apply 9 volts and as you can see it works um, so the potentiometer will alter the frequency from inaudible well certainly at my advanced years down to uh, reasonably low frequency there so I believe it um, roughly in the middle uh, let's have a look uh, what the oscilloscope makes of that here's the oscilloscope trace um, and if I do a bit of frequency changing actually um, stops oscillating at that point the power level drops right down Now I'm taking these uh, these readings off the uh, uh, primary side of the, the transformer. It does actually influence the circuit a little bit. But if I take those readings off the speaker side, um, and we'll just up the amplitude so you can see it, uh, that's that's what's appearing at the uh, at the loudspeaker. Anyway, it does the job rather well. I'm sure you're sick to death of hearing that now, so let's uh, uh, put you out of misery. But um, nice to see uh, certainly uh, those components are, um, uh, are doing the job all right. So, uh, yeah, I'd be more than pleased with that if I was a young lad being given this uh, as something to play with. OK, well, there you have the, uh, the 75 in 1 project kit. Now, I'm going to do another video uh, on some of the projects in this kit uh, because there's some actually some quite interesting stuff and it, it's a genuinely educational bit of kit and I think in some ways it's actually better than the Philips Electronic Engineer for that because uh, although it doesn't go into lots of detail in the manual uh, it does allow you to build uh, all manner of projects which have uh, uh, the kind of things that are still in use today albeit they in um, in the form of integrated circuits etc but yeah it, it's a real good ground in electronics and I think my other comment on, on the kit is that um, with the Philips Electronic Engineer you actually had the components and you push the spring down pop the component in and the, and the spring grip the component and eventually of course that meant the, the component wires got bent and they eventually failed now whilst they're not expensive items not everybody would know where to perhaps get the individual components from and only the uh, transistors were on separate bits of circuit board. In this kit everything's mounted on the cardboard insert uh, with um, attached to springs so all you actually do is you connect the springs together with wires and um, the wires were, were missing so I just got some other bits of wire and made up the circuits like that but I think that's probably uh, a little bit more of a, a durable system 
shall we say. Anyway, I will definitely make a part two video, but I hope you've enjoyed yet another bit of ridiculous 70s nostalgia. And I think this is quite a nice bit of kit to go along with the uh, the Archer kit multimeter that uh, we looked at a uh, few, uh, few videos back. Thanks very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.